we are here because we demand and deserve a voice in our own future. Henry? Um, my name is Henry Nicholas and I am a Bill Lucy apprentice. <laughs> uh, and uh, because of his vision, I grew up in the labor movement and at 81, I'm still working and I, he never told me to go on vacation, so I've never been on vacation yet. <laughs> I worked all of my life for the movement. I'm the president of the National Union of Hospital and Healthcare Employees uh, nationwide. And uh, this is a special moment for me because never in the America that I live in, Bill, we as a people had an exposure to what they call apprentices. Last week, all over the country, if you work in health care, child care, or home care, those job bills is apprenticed nationwide for the first time, meaning, just like the construction workers, if you go to Chicago, you never have to start all over again. That's for more than three million employees happened less than 20 days ago. I am from the next, next door. I grew up in the state of Mississippi. And I've had, with Bill's help, because he told me everything I know, but I knew what to do with it when he told it to me. I've had the opportunity to be in some key places and had some key powers. I wrote the checks for every major demonstration that appeared in Washington, D.C., every one of them. Martin Luther King was the honorary chair of the union, my union, and after his death, Coretta King served in that role until her death. But I've been in some good places and if you work hard enough, and I'm only 80, 81 now, and tend to keep on until I'm 101 at least, <laughs> uh, but if you stay around long enough, you can do some, some good work. The best work that I've done in all of my life was that last week, if you work in home care, health care, or child care nationwide, all of those jobs are now apprentice jobs in America. And it was with Bill's teaching and my never giving up that those workers all across the country now have apprenticeship for the first time. All of them. That's huge for working people. Yes. And so we, we, but we have some work to do <laughs> because we, we slept on our way to the pole in November. <laughs> and we probably have our worst president ever. And, uh, you know, and he came to my state. And I know he was scary, Bill, when he, first he organized 113 white guys. And we, when he organized them, he had their wives too. So he wanted to get a blue state, and he came to my state to claim that he had a blue state. But then he went on to win the election. Because, hear me well, I ain't gonna lie about this. Most people ain't never gonna let a woman be their boss. Do you hear me? <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and Trump, Trump said it's gonna never happen. And he lined up everybody in. We are stuck with him at least for eight years, unless you recall it. <laughs> no, 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 no. Oh, <laughs> 
unless you get out of get to the pole like you never did before, he will be around for eight years. Because he has the he has the ability to buy his way through. Most people don't have that ability. And so it was Bill that, us, that got us here. And uh, I'm so proud that he took me under his wings and showed me the ropes. And as a re result of that, Bill, I've not made a mistake yet. <laughs> so, so most of us here, whether you know it, know it or not, most of us here because of Bill Luce's vision. And uh, I call on him every day when I need help. And I hope he's still around a long time, Bill, because if we ever needed you, we need you now. Thank you so very much. Thank you. Very much. We, have, we have two executive council members up here with us. Let me go to them very quickly, then I want to come back to Bill. Uh, once again, I'm Paulette Thompson. I'm Region 10 representative. I've been a union member since 1976. I started out in mental health when I first started. I started uh, in med surge, working with neurology patients. Then I went to the MIO program. The MIO program is the middle offender unit. I did psychiatric evaluation for the courts to see if they had a competence to stand trial. After I left from there, I went to the prison system. I'm currently a correction officer. I worked inside the prison for 18 years. I was the first female to work the cell block at McNeil Allen Correction Center. I don't know if any of you guys ever heard of it. It's on the Allen by itself. The only way you can get there by boat and leave by boat. I also worked with uh, Charles Manson was there when I first started at McNeil Allen. Then I went to the work crew in Seattle, Washington. I went there in 2000 and I stayed there to 2008. Then I came to Tacoma work crew. I work in community corrections now. And my experience for um, CBTU, uh, Thea Lute was one of the presidents of Puget Sound Chapter originally, and she organized the Puget Sound Chapter. And that's how I got involved with CBTU. And then I got a chance to meet Mr. Lucy, and he gave me a, some of the educational piece about CBTU. You know, this house, Secretary Treasurer, the American Postal Workers Union. This room is beautiful. It is. It is gorgeous. We need each other now more than we ever have. It is important that we continue to have meetings like this, support each other in what we do. When CJ got up, very proud young man, he doesn't tell you that he's the 29-year-old president of the CBTU Baltimore chapter. <laughs> Baltimore chapter. <laughs> in our union, not only for the young folks, but for the medium old folks and for the old folks. But he's very active within his community as well as being active within his union. And while we are busy with our unions, it is important that we're also busy with our communities. We can do nothing by ourselves. You know, your next door neighbor or the neighbor down the street or the neighbor across town means just as much to each and every one of us as we do to each other. Keep doing what you're doing because you're doing an excellent job no matter who you are and where you are. And don't let nobody tell you otherwise. I am proud of this young man. Hear what he didn't tell you. Tell me what union you belong to. Oh, APWU. Yes. <laughs> he is a member of the American Postal Workers Union and we're very proud to have him. I'm going to share something with you very quickly and then I'm going to sit down. I heard a young lady say that she was here from Portland, Oregon. Uh, I was there for a state convention, postal state convention, and they had a auction. And the young man had already told me that this auction contained a book with a very important person's signature in the book. <laughs> and you know what they do when you're national officer, you know, they think you got money. We don't got no more money than they do. They started out with the bid, no more than 50 bucks, okay? So I go 100, I figure, okay. This lady sitting behind me said 125. I go, okay, 150. Then she says 200. I said 300. They said sold. I said thank you very much. <laughs> thank, thank you very much. But I did that not because I wanted that book. It's because William Bill Lucy's signature was in that book. Not only is that history for me, 
It's history for my children. It's history for my grandchildren. And since I'm a Gigi, it's history for my great grandson. Okay? It is people like him and Willie and Henry and some of the other officers here that have been around a long time. And we need, like I said, we need them. We need each other. They've taught us a lot. And I am proud not only to be a member of my union, but to be a member of the Coalition of Black Trade Unionists. Stay strong, sisters and brothers. God bless each of us. I'm going to call on Bill next. After Bill, I'm going to open it up for questions from you. Tell me what we didn't tell you about that you want to know about, and then at the end, you're going to get. I, I think it's important that we uh, have a good sense of, of who we are. Uh, most organizations really spend all their time creating the leader. Uh, this organization was created by five people and then a whole lot more joined on to what we were doing. Um, you may not ever hear the name of Charlie Hayes, uh, but if you're from Chicago, you will know instantly that Joe Lewis fought his first fight in Charlie Hayes' parking lot. Charlie Hayes was from the meat cutters and packing house workers and a member of the United Food and Commercial Workers Union and a vice president of that union. Uh, you will probably never hear the name of Cleveland Robinson. Anybody ever hear the name? Cleve Robinson is one of, one of the strongest trade union leaders this movement has ever seen or heard of, but you don't hear, hear, hear the name. Uh, you, you, you won't hear the name of Nelson Jack Edwards. We got any auto workers in here? Nelson Jack Edwards and Horace Sheffield. Two solid trade unionists who had worked a lifetime trying to find a way to give voice to rank and filers and committed trade unions. Uh, you're going to hear the name uh, tomorrow of Bill Simons, a member of the United Federation of Teachers, a local union president who joined us in this effort. And the reason they joined us is we mentioned 1972 was the start. Well, there was a, an election in 1968. Uh, and those who are honest will remember we elected Richard Nixon in a contest with Hubert Humphrey. We remember that? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and what upset us, not that the Federation did not have the right to not endorse, but it's not hard to tell the difference, at least among working people, of the difference between a Hubert Humphrey and a Richard Nixon and a George McGovern. Uh, we spent four years at the request of our own individual unions and the AFL-CIO tracking Richard Nixon's record among working people. Uh, how many of y'all remember the wage and price free? We got a young crowd here. <laughs> <laughs> in, in, in 1968, Nixon froze wages and, and, and faked like he was going to freeze prices. Wages stood still, prices went up. Uh, at the beginning of his second campaign, he started his campaign in Philadelphia, Mississippi. How many of y'all familiar with Philadelphia, Mississippi? So what happened in Philadelphia, Mississippi? It was the assassination site of three civil rights workers. And what Richard Nixon was doing was creating the Southern strategy. How many of us are familiar with the Southern strategy? Then we will remember that is the strategy that just got used in November of last year by Donald Trump. It is a strategy that is death for labor, uh, hard on working people, and, and, a, and a, 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 almost like a, a dictatorship. Uh, and I don't know who y'all might be for, but this is a real threat to the democracy that we have enjoyed for so long. No matter what the difficulties have been, uh, they will be worse under the policies and programs of a Donald Trump. Now, we're not suggesting you be for anybody, but we need you to know what it is that you are for. Uh, this convention will deal with that. Henry just made a point of uh, health care workers being apprenticed. Um, I can say without fear or contradiction, the unions are in bad trouble. Bad trouble, and they will not get better unless we build at the local level. 
to strengthen our local unions, our central bodies, our state federation, and bring everybody in. Uh, I served for 15 years on the executive council of the SLCIO prior to uh, a lot of stuff going on. <coughs> Unless we can build strength for our unions at community level, uh, we are practically out of the game in the context of electoral politics. I mean, we got to elect dog catchers, uh, street sweepers, everybody we can to get back into this game. And I'm suggesting that the Coalition of Black Trade Unions is going to be in the training mood to prepare folks for leadership roles at every level of organized labor. Now, some of y'all going to wonder, well, how come we call this the Coalition of Black Trade Unions? Some of y'all been wondering about that? One or two, you won't put your hand up, but I know you've been wondering. <laughs> <laughs> this is 2017, and there are fundamental differences in terms of how policies affect people and groups. And there's nothing wrong with suggesting that we have to address policy in the context of how that policy affects us and how we work on it. That doesn't mean that we're anti anything, we're just pro working on policies that are to the benefit of our community. For instance, uh, I, I grew up in Richmond, California, and, and you had a liquor store on about every other corner. That was not an accident of nature. That was by design. I mean, people who zone make these decisions. We ought to know who's on the zoning board in our community. Uh, we ought to know who make the policies that deal with Flint and his water problem is not an accident. That was a deliberate decision made by a governor to save a nickel here or a dollar there and allow people to drink poison oil. Flint is the tip of the iceberg. So we are trying to uh, work with people to bring about a level of understanding of how they address these issues. That is the job that we are trying to do and we want you to participate in. What you can do is anybody who works next to you, talk them into belonging to the union, not just having to pay fair share dues. You want them as union members and active union members helping to build the organization. Henry? Uh, at this convention, there are both private sector workers and public sector workers. And what we do not get is the education needed and necessary when those slogans get rolled out. You know, when you heard right to work, we couldn't get nobody against right to work. But you didn't understand the total meaning of right to work. Right. And that's what CBTU can play a major role in. The public sector and the private sector, we're all in this room. Uh, I, I, at 81, I haven't been asleep. I've never been on vacation. I've never filled out a vacation slip yet. Don't intend to fill out none soon. Here's the problem. In this period, very, very scary. All of the public sector workers, which I'm an international vice president of ASME, all of those jobs are literally at stake. The whole union is almost get wiped away. And I represent totally a private sector union. I think the angels up in heaven was looking down on me because less than 20 days ago, something wonderful happened in one of the, the largest industry where the majority of all of us work in home care, health care, and child care across these United States. For the first time in history, because of our political effort, all of those jobs are now apprenticeship jobs. Not just some of them, all of them. For us, that's huge. I'm looking for a representative in every state of the union. If you find him, I'll pay for him so we can go out and take advantage of this apprentice highway that we have created. Because in that, 
it, it means that they are some security. If you work in home health care, home care, health care, child care, under apprenticeship, once you're in, you don't have to never go looking for a job. You got your walking shoes on. It's important that's the greatest time, this is the greatest time for history, if we get the people in this room to help us be soldiers on, in this army to take the message around. But we can't do it without you. We need your help. 